on the Rare Breed Survival Trust list, there are about 16 different breeds of equines, horses. So everything from the heavy horses, like the Clydesdale, the Shire, of course the Suffolk Punch here. Then you've got the Hackney Pony and Horse, which is a carriage horse. And then the hardy breeds like the Fell, the Dartmoor, the Eriske, and of course these, the Exmoors. Really my favourite. Hello. This is a stunningly beautiful part of the farm, an area we call Barton Bushes, and it's a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest, because it's got rare plants and butterflies in here. Cotswold Pennycrest, which produces a little white flower, and then Duke of Burgundy Flotillary. And under the guidance of Plant Life and Natural England, we graze this area and manage it very sensitively for the wildlife. And we use our rare breeds of cattle and horses and ponies for conservation grazing. So they'll rip off the rough scrub, they'll pull down some of the thorn, they'll open it up to let all those plants thrive and survive. My dad was a great rare breeds enthusiast and founder chairman of the Rare Breed Survival Trust and so he was very keen for me and my three sisters to get involved with rare breeds conservation and so uh, he gave us all a breed each and uh, that encouraged us to get involved and my breed was the Exmoor Pony and he got some from a breeder off Exmoor a man called Ronnie Wallace and the Wallace family are still very no well known breeders up on Exmoor and I absolutely adore them. They're a very special breed of horse. Ancient, really, almost Neanderthal, if you think of an equivalent in humans. The thing with Exmoors is they're very uniform in the way they look and their colour, so they're quite difficult to tell apart. So in their coloration, their coat is known as dun or bay or brown, and basically different shades of the same color. And they've all got these mealy noses, which is this paler nose around the nose and around the eye, and then under their bellies and on the tops of their legs. So very similar to look at, and absolutely gorgeous when you've got a whole herd together. You're lovely, aren't you? So some of the features of the Exmoor that show hardiness are first of all their little ears, so big ears you lose heat, so with little thick ears that retains the heat when they're up on the moors of Exmoor. And then this very pronounced eyebrow, so the snow and the rain will run off this and it's known as toad eye. And then they've got this beautiful coat, so now on the surface they have these guard hairs and then underneath is a downy layer that insulates them. And a really good example of how well this works is known as the snow thatching. So when the snow falls on them, it'll stay on their body without thawing. So what that means is that the heat from their body isn't melting the snow. They're so well insulated, the snow will just sit on their backs like a thatch. And so they have to shake to shake it all off. And then on their tail, it fans out and they've got like a shoot where the snow and rain will run off their tails. And they're so good at surviving incredibly tough conditions up on Exmoor. And so the Exmoor Pony Society didn't want the breed improved or changed because those are valuable traits that we want to hang on to. And they'll graze thorn and rough grass, but also gorse. And you can see them up on the moor, what they'll do is they'll bite off the ends of the gorse and they'll twist it round in their mouths so that the thorns don't get into their tongue and chew it, just quite remarkable. It's incredible really to think that these ponies have been around for about 100,000 years and people have been using them as working animals on farms, for riding, pulling carriages, and then also now for conservation grazing. 
and the Exmoor is a very strong and sturdy animal. It can carry an adult up to about 12 stone in weight, very, very strong, but also sure-footed, they say. So in undulating ground like this, they tend not to trip. They're very good at finding their way because they're used to that up on the moors. And with carriage driving, they're strong as well. A pair of Exmoors pulling a carriage is a really exciting thing to see. We have horse fun rides on the farm every month. And often we get a couple of people coming up riding their Exmoors around, which I always love to see. And I think they're absolutely marvellous animals. The Exmoor Pony Society, which is the Breed Society, was formed in 1921. But after the Second World War, they got down to really low numbers, down to around 50 ponies, so critically rare. And thankfully, a lady called Mary Etherington took a group of ponies up to Edinburgh and started the conservation breeding programme. So the breed has got a lot to thank her for, really. And now they're spread right across the UK and into Europe. And there's around three and a half thousand Exmoors, which is fantastic news. Still quite a narrow gene pool because they only came from 50. And what the Rare Breed Survival Trust is doing, working with the Exmoor Pony Society, is using cryogenic. So breeding the animals, the living animals, but also collecting semen and embryos to store in frozen time. So they freeze them down so they'll last for hundreds of years. And then if the breed gets wiped out for whatever reason, due to disease, then we can bring them back to life by taking the embryos and the semen from the freezer. Quite extraordinary now how science is helping animal breeding and conservation. And I like to see them running around. And they're standing out in this area here with no form of sort of human intervention. There's no houses, there's no pylons, just these lovely old scrubby bushes with these ancient animals grazing. You could step back in time, almost to Neanderthal times. Couldn't you? Oh, look, she's tired. Am I boring you? <laughs> For me, they've got a soft spot in my heart, really, because they're so lovely and they've been around on the farm for as long as I can remember and, you know, always being considered as my breed. And they oh, look exhausted. <laughs> They're so lovely to be around. We run ours as a sort of, I don't know, they're semi-feral really. We don't do a huge amount with them. We breed from them and then we sell foals onto people who then use them for riding. And a lot of the Bembra herd, which is what our farm is called, have gone on to win some fantastic championships, the horse of the year show and those sorts of things. So our breeding has been around for a long time. And uh, I love them, don't I? We've got four mares out here, um, a couple of colts, so males, and then just the other day, we went and got ourselves a brand new stallion. So we'll go and see him. While I'm here, it'd be rude not to go and say hello to my suffered punches. So with the suffered punches, we've got Victoria over there, who's about 19 years old now, and this is Lexi. So Lexi had a foal last year, Braveheart, who's now gone to a new home and is doing really well. And she's heavily pregnant. So in this big tummy is a foal that's due first week of May. So Lexi will be going back to the Whole Beach Suffolk Punch Stud where she got pregnant and gave birth last year, where Alison and her dad Mike are experts at breeding Suffolk punches. So they're going to foal her down there for me because I don't have the skill or the expertise to do that. And hopefully we'll get a fit and healthy little foal. Let me, Lexi, you'll be a very proud mum again. She is a fantastic mother. She was so good with Braveheart. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the next foal. I'm hoping that she'll give birth to a filly, but when we had her scan, the vet thought it was probably a male, but a colt, but we're not 100% sure. And when a mare gives birth, you want them to be in perfect condition, so they're not too fat, so that they can, can give birth reasonably easily, but not too skinny, because when they start to milk, they'll lose condition. And I reckon she's about perfect. Aren't you, Lexi? Hmm? 
You are beautiful. Huge, but beautiful. So this is our new Exmoor Stallion. His name is Willow Warbler and he's three years old and he's quite a small chap. He's got a little bit of growing to do yet, haven't you? And we've been lent him from some breeders over near the Breckens. He's going to be with us for a couple of years. Handsome, aren't you? Like that? Looks more are very seasonal, so they'll come into season to be able to be receptive to the stallion in the spring and during the summer, and then they'll go off season in the autumn. So hopefully we'll have foals being born next May, June time. Very well behaved, aren't you? So he's just getting used to us. Quite good practice to be taking the head collar on and off. And I've had some lessons from a lady called Kelly Marks who is a horse whisperer. And when you get a pony or a horse that's nervous, she says, when you go towards them, you should keep your face down, so you're not staring at them, keep your face down, move in sideways. And if they move away from you, you should release the pressure and then move slowly back in. But now he's used to me. He's been very good, aren't you? You're very nice, aren't you, Warbler? Hey, you got a good name. He's a good boy. We're going to have some of your lovely foals, hopefully. Good boy. You like that, don't you? Stallions, you know, obviously full of testosterone, can be quite dangerous and aggressive. You have to be careful with them. But this little fella does seem to be very placid and very friendly, which is quite an advantage. He's a good boy. I think you're ex or late, you know. I think you're a very handsome chap. He's a good boy. So, we'll be putting Warbler out with the mares in the near future, and uh, we'll keep you updated. 